Hello everyone, hopefully you can see me um, and hear me clearly. Uh, hopefully I'm coming through from our virtual classroom as we go through um, some level three bio learning for today. Um, if you can hear me all clearly and I'm coming through um, so that everything is working, could you please let me know in the chat if anything isn't working? Um, just post there as well. Uh, I'll be looking at the chat as we go through uh, the work for today which is going to cover all of the slides. Um, so this will be a supplementary resource for you um, in the form of a video um, at the end if you need to refer back to this. Um, hopefully uh, this will cover basically all of the stuff that you need to know about taxis and kinesis or kinesis. Um, I'll just check over to the chat now, make sure everything is working okay. My little baby computer is trying its darndest to be able to keep up uh, with everything. Um, so hopefully that's all coming through clearly to you. Um, if you have any issues throughout the, the meet or you have any questions, um, you can send uh, a little uh, comment in the chat or alternatively, um, you can hold your question um, if you don't want to share it in that way um, and join us for our meet tomorrow, fifth period. Um, so that'll be at 2.10 p.m. We'll be meeting on Google Meet um, in our classroom. Essentially, all we'll be doing is a bit of a QA. and a I'll be checking in, seeing how you all are doing. Um, and after that, we'll do a little bit of a Level 3 Bio Kahoot on the content uh, from this week. Now, before we dive into the content uh, for today, um, what I'd like you all to do is just to double check uh, that you have indeed uh, sent me uh, your or attached your um, your current document for AS91601 which is that internal uh, that we've been working on. Um, you need to do that uh, through Google Classroom or by sending it to me via email. Um, most of you have done that which is fantastic. Uh, my job for later today is to be going through those and offering feedback and suggestions um, Essentially, when we end up back at school, we're going to be um, giving you your resources so you can get started on that. Um, if anyone has any questions about that as well, you're welcome to post them um, into the live chat as a comment below or um, to hold them until our Google Meet uh, tomorrow. Okay, um, I can't see any questions right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is move straight on uh, to our content for this week. Uh, which is covering taxis and kinesis. Um, you'll also see that Miss McNair posted a uh, assignment to you, um, which involved going through the slides that I'm about to show you um, and handing in a couple of SciPad pages covering uh, taxis and kinesis. If you do this um, and you then get started on, on that checkpoint uh, that we were working towards, you should be absolutely fine um, by the time we come back to school. If there's any issues there, or if there's anything I need to know, um, you're welcome to send me an email. Okay, let's dive into the content for today. All right, first thing is, uh, why do organisms move? Good question. So organisms like to move because they want to move away from things that are going to kill them and towards things that are going to help them to survive. Now, um, the ability for organisms to be able to respond to that um, relies on them being able to sense their environment and then respond to that environment, usually in a directional way, right? Um, and if we think about our taxis and kinesis, these are simple, real basic ways for organisms to orient themselves, uh, to make sure that they're in places which are going to be favorable to their survival and therefore passing on their genes, which is ultimately the fundamental job of every organism on Earth. Um, if you can avoid things that aren't so good for you and go to places that are good for you, maybe there's a better chance you'll be able to pass on your genes. Um, you can think about things they might want to avoid, poisons, predators, dehydration, um, possibly if there's too much water, avoiding uh, drowning, um, and things they might want to move towards, things like food, mates, uh, places where there's going to be lots of sunlight if they're interested in photosynthesis. Um, you can see, oh, excuse me. You can see an example of a kinesis um, in that bottom corner uh, over there, um, which is uh, a little uh, sow bug, um, where when it is out in the open, it'll kind of wander around um, trying to find places that are cool and moist. And as soon as it finds a place that's cool and moist, it will tend to stay there. 
So that's what we're talking about today. Okay. So uh, taxis, um, single is Texas, not to be confused uh, with calling a taxi. Um, Texas is, uh, comes from the Latin, and it's to do with directions. So um, just the same as if you uh, hopped in an Uber, you'd, uh, the Uber would um, have directions that they would take to take you somewhere. Back in the old days when we used to take like for real taxis, um, you could, that was kind of the way that we used to remember it. It's a directional response by the organism to or away from some environmental stimulus. Now usually we think about this as something that is abiotic, so not um, an organism, but something like sunlight, heat, moisture, all of that kind of stuff. If the organism is moving towards that stimulus, we say this is a positive taxis. Um, if we're moving away uh, from the stimulus, it's a negative taxis. Um, and in order to distinguish like what that stimulus is, we use a prefix, a thing that goes in front of the bit taxis uh, to signify like what they're moving towards or away from. Uh, to answer your question, Theo, um, you know, it's a classroom, I've got to dress up, um, you know, in, even in virtual space, even in the, the virtual world, you know, we've got to come looking our best. All right. Um, next slide, let's move on to it. These are going to be probably the more challenging bits. So once you know that a taxis is directional and you know the positive is moving towards that stimulus and uh, negative is moving away from that stimulus, we need to put what type of stimulus this is in front. Now there's a whole bunch of prefixes that we like to use and they're all based on Latin, which is great because young people just love Latin. Um, I found these really hard when I was learning uh, at school. Uh, but the key thing is these are essentially the seven ones you probably need to know. Um, so some of these you'll be able to figure out kind of because you know them already. Photo is to do with light. Gravity is to do with gravity. Hydro is to do with water. Chemo is to do with chemicals, right? Um, and you could think of a whole bunch of examples of this. If you're um, a little uh, 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 bug that doesn't want to be out in the sun because you're going to dehydrate and die, um, you might have a negative photo taxis. You tend to move away from the sunlight. If you lift up a little log, right, there's a bunch of little buggies under there, um, those little buggies are going to show negative photo taxis because they move away from the light towards the darkness, right? Now, they're not moving towards the stimulus of dark because the stimulus is actually that light energy, those photons. They're moving away from areas of high concentration of that stimulus. Um, so you, you get the idea. Uh, there's a few there, though, that might not be super common uh, usage for you. So it's important that you write these down in your cue cards as terms to remember. Figmo is touch, right? It's Latin for touch. And there might be some responses that we'll talk about today uh, which are negative or positive Figmo uh, taxis, right? Thermo is heat and Rio is current, so that's to do with um, uh, like electricity, right? Um, uh, those of you who do physics might have heard of Rio stats before, um, that's to do with current and electricity. So um, Rio is like, normally we talk about Rio stats, it's like a variable resistor. Anyway, not important. Texas examples, let's have a look at a few of them. So we've got a little snail, um, it's crawling up after you, you disturb it. Um, uh, it's showing a negative gravity taxis. That snail is trying to get somewhere nice and high, right? So it's moving away from the stimulus of gravity or in the opposite direction towards, um, to the direction that stimulus normally goes. So that snail crawling upwards is an example of negative gravity taxis. Hopefully that makes sense so far. We've got a little earthworm there, um, which burrows down into the ground. Now, maybe that's using uh, gravity as a response there. Um, oh, good to see some more of you joining. Lovely to see you all here. Um, but maybe that's moving away from the light. Maybe that's its primary source. And there could be some experiments we could do uh, to try and figure that out. In fact, scientists have done it. It's primarily light for worms. So the movement away from light is negative because it's moving away from the stimulus. Photo, because it's light. Taxis, because it's directional. Negative photo taxis. 
Now the last one we've got there um, is a flatworm um, and it's moving towards um, this food and it's moving towards the smell of food. It's going, mmm, that smells delicious, that rotting food, whatever it may be. And it moves towards it and that uh, stimulus that it's getting is a chemical stimulus, right? And because it's moving towards, it's directional, it's positive chemo, because it's responding to the chemicals uh, that are in the air, probably some particular chemicals uh, which we could investigate and find out. Um, so it's an example of positive chemotaxis, this movement of this flatworm towards the smell of some rotting meat. Okay, good. Hopefully that makes sense so far. Um, my little baby computer is really struggling uh, to switch tabs. Um, there's a couple of other examples here. Um, so a maggot on a piece of paper, probably not the nicest thing for you to be thinking about right now, but um, if the light is switched on um, uh, in one direction and you sort of point it over at the side, the maggot's going to move away from the light, uh, it's negative phototaxis. Now, the key thing that we want you to be thinking about is not necessarily just labeling these taxes. That's that sort of achieve level thinking. We want you to be thinking at the merit and excellence level, which requires you to describe the advantage of this taxis for the organism in question. Okay? So if this taxis uh, for this maggot uh, is moving away from that light source, it's a negative photo taxis, why might that benefit the maggot? Well, maybe. If it moves away, maggots are quite vulnerable, aren't they? So maybe it's going to reduce the chances that a predator will attack them. Maybe it's going to help it to not dry out so much. You can think of a whole bunch of examples, but the key thing here is once you've labelled the taxis, thinking about how it provides a selective advantage to that organism, allowing it to survive and pass on its genes. We've got another example here. A female silk moth releases a pheromone called bombicol or bombicol. Um, the male silk moth detects it and flies in that direction in order to be able to find that mate. Um, there are two little antennae um, which they use and that allows for the organism to be able to turn its head in the direction um, of whichever antenna has the most bombicol. So there's, a, there's actually a whole mechanism around there um, to allow for this positive chemotaxis, this movement towards that stimulus. Now the key thing we want you to be thinking about here is what's the benefit? Well, greater chances that the organism will be able to pass on its genes, right? So an organism that can do this compared to an organism that can't has a selective advantage. It's more likely to pass on its genes. That's what we want you thinking about. Cool. Um, how do you recognize it? Great question. If the behavior is directional, right, towards or away from the stimulus, it's most likely going to be a taxis, right? Um, and there's a little revision, little problem there for you to have a go at, which will hopefully, right, help reinforce the positive and the negative. The animal moves away from the stimulus, what is it? You can write the answer in chat, see if everyone gets it right. Um, if the animal moves towards the stimulus, it's a what? I'll let you try and write that first one. What is it? Um, your bonus problem is to write those five different prefixes from memory. You can probably think of a whole bunch off the top of your head. Um, if anyone gets the one for touch, that's a big bonus. Um, if anyone gets the one for current, that's a big bonus because those are less common. Um, you're welcome to uh, write out the answers in chat. I'm going to skip over the answers, but they'll be in the slides for you to review. Okay, before we dive into kinesis, I'm just going to switch back and check the chat, uh, see if there's anyone asking any questions. Um, no, it looks like we're all good. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, I'll cure the team. Um, I'll mark you all as present because you said hello. Um, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to post them in there. Um, if you get some questions later on, save them. We'll do a little bit of a Q&A at the Google Meet tomorrow. Okay, let's move on, get through this as quickly as possible so you can go off and do the important uh, things that you will all have to do in your lives, such as having lunch, which is very important. Um, okay, kinesis. Here is a little bit different. Kinesis, you can think of like um, kinesthetics, you can think of um, there's a whole bunch of like, because essentially what this means is movement, right? Kinesis is movement. Um, and specifically in this example, in this context, we talk about taxis as directional, kinesis is random movement, right? And it's not in the direction necessarily of the stimulus, it's non-directional. What we're controlling here is not um, 
the direction of movement, but the rate of movement, i.e. how much the organism is moving based on how strong the stimulus is, right? If the movement is greater, um, then the organism is trying to move away from that stimulus, right? Um, so you, if the organism is in a place that they don't want to be, or it's it's going to be disadvant, not advantageous uh, for them to be in that space, they're going to move more, um, and then they're going to slow down when they're in places of comfort. There's a bunch of examples, and we're going to go through some. And the way I want you thinking as we're going through these about the selective advantage that doing this provides. Wood lice, perfect example, move super rapidly in dry environments. Those of you familiar with wood lice, or those of you who've seen them, I guess maybe you've pulled up a log or something, as soon as the environment becomes not so damp, you see the wood lice scuttling all over the place, right? And they're not necessarily going in a direction. They're moving quickly and turning quickly, right? The, the more dry an environment it is, right? And it's directly proportional to humidity. Humidity, the amount of water in the air, uh, is the thing that it's proportional towards, right? Um, as soon as it gets to a high humidity environment, the wood lice slows down and it starts to walk less because it's in a space that is advantageous for it. It doesn't want to move out of that space. That's the thing there, right? Now, orthokinesis, ortho meaning um, straight or, you know, in a straight line, um, means that the thing that is controlled is the speed of that movement, right? Ortho is the prefix that we use here, okay? Um, and usually this uh, prefix goes uh, before, uh, sorry, sorry, after that stim, where you describe the stimulus. You say the, the stimulus name, um, say it's Figmo, say it's Photo, and then you say whether it's an orthokinesis or whether it's another form that we're going to come to in a moment. The key thing is ortho is to do with speed. Right? If you're in an unfavorable space, you run super quick. If you're in a favorable condition, you slow right down. Right? You still probably turn back and forth the same amount, but it's that speed in those places you don't want to be in. That's the key thing with orthokinesis. In contrast, clino or clinokinesis means turning. Fast, uh, sorry, the more intense the stimulus, right, the faster you turn. So um, in dry areas, wood lice turn really rapidly um, as they switch back and forth from different places. And when they end up in a favorable place, um, they turn much more slowly, right? They walk along, and then as soon as they get to a spot they don't like, they turn, and then they walk along if they're in a good space, and then they turn again if they end up somewhere they don't want to be. You get the idea. So our two prefixes are ortho, meaning speed, and clino meaning turning, okay? That's what we need to know here. So um, I'm just gonna check the chat, make sure there's uh, no new questions, um, but you get the idea. So ortho and clino, and this little graph should help you out with figuring out which one uh, you're looking at, right? Um, so with this particular diagram here, you can see, um, if it's a directional response to the stimulus, i.e. we put the light in the middle, the wood lights run away from the light um, in a direction that they just keep going in that direction, right? That's an example of a taxis. However, when the intensity changes, right, the intensity of the movement changes and it's not directional, right, we call that a kinesis. And we have two different forms of this, right? We have our ortho and our clino, and both could be happening at the same time. Um, but usually in questions, you'll be given a very clear uh, and precise definition, which will help you figure out which one they're asking you to talk about. So for um, uh, the orthokinesis example, we call that hydro. I think they've written hydro. Uh, but hydro orthokinesis, um, uh, if they're talking about, say, water. Um, uh, and movement is increased in areas where there is less water, right? Because these organisms like being places that are damp. Um, clinokinesis, by example, um, low rate of turning in areas which have lots of water, um, nice and humid, nice and damp. However, in areas that are really uh, low 
in water, you have a high rate of turning. So we call that hydroclinokinesis, right? Those are those differences there. Um, now we got a couple more things to go in. So thigmokinesis. Some of you uh, might know that um, certain organisms um, uh, stop moving or start moving or move much more rapidly when they come in contact with things. Um, and that could be contact with another organism, it could be contact with a wall, for example, it could be contact with a leaf. Um, so earwigs, for example, when they come in contact with a surface, um, they stop, right? So that's an example of a thigmokinesis, right? Um, again, uh, um, kinesis rather than taxis because it's a non directional response. Um, wood lice uh, like to clump together in big groups. It might be a little bit gross to some of you, but um, like slaters, for example, uh, like to hang out together. This is what helps them uh, like um, uh, maintain their humidity um, and reduce their water loss. So when they're touching each other, uh, they tend uh, to not move around as much, uh, they don't move as quickly, so that would be an example of a thigmokinesis, either a thigmoorthokinesis if it was speed, or a thigmoclinokinesis if it was turning. We get the idea. Okay, how do you recognize a kinesis? Here's a summary. Um, does it vary in intensity or concentration? Is the animal altering its speed or rate of movement, right? It, the key thing is, no obvious direction, it's likely a kinesis, right, as opposed to a taxis. Um, here are the two pages from your SciPad that we're asking you to work through. Um, hopefully, we're able to understand now how to answer all of these questions by using those prefixes and those suffixes um, in the correct order. And you're welcome to ask any specific questions about these. There's also an opportunity here uh, for you to discuss kinesis in more detail or kinesis in more detail. And I've got the examples here of the wood lice uh, moving around the plate and you can figure out based on what I've told you that, um, and they also mention it here, that these wood lice uh, aren't massive fans of drying out because this causes them to die. Um, so they like those humid damp environments and in those humid damp environments they not only move less quickly but also they turn less often. Um, but based on the observations here, right, what do we think is going on? Is it, is it speed? Is it movement? Is it both? I'll let you figure that one out. Um, lastly, um, the key thing that I'd like you to take away from this is not only just thinking about these examples and naming them, but also to think about the advantage that it gives, right? Why do we avoid light? So we don't dry out, or so we avoid predators. Why are we attracted to pheromones? Uh, to be able to find a mate. Why um, do Pippi, for example, dig into the sand? It's to avoid predators. You'll get the idea. And when you're thinking about that when you're answering these questions, um, there's a little summary slide here for you um, covering that content. Now, just so you know, um, we've, we're basically at the end. That's it. Um, the goal for the end of this week is for you to um, complete that task document uh, which includes those SciPad pages. Um, those SciPad pages are up there for you because I know not all of you uh, had your SciPads um, or were able to bring them home. Um, so Miss McNair has put those up for you. Uh, lastly, before we end uh, the content for today, uh, what I'd like to ask is that if you haven't uh, added your internal document um, or send it to me via email, um, could you please do that today? I'm going to go through them today and offer any feedback um, uh, on those documents, even if you haven't started, like because I know that there's a couple of you who've had difficult situations going on, so I'd at least like to see, here's my document, here's where I'm going to put my work when I do it. Um, we can go through that and offer you the support that you need. Now with that, um, I think it's probably about time for lunch. So um, if you've got any questions, I'll stick around for a minute or two, um, in the chat um, if you want to ask anything, but you're welcome to bring these to the uh, to the Google Meet tomorrow where we'll do a bit of a Kahoot. Other than that, have a lovely rest of your day. Look after yourselves. I hope you and your whanau are all doing okay in your bubbles, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Kakite.